Hey, this is Andrew Brown from ExamPro, and we are looking at Azure's deployment models. The first model we're going to talk about is public cloud, and that's where everything is built on the cloud service provider. You're not using anything on-prem or in your own data centers. Everything is running within Azure. Generally, this is known as cloud native, but for some reason, Azure calls it the public cloud. So that's what we're going to use in the terminology here. So here I have an architectural diagram. We have a network on Azure, and within that network, we have a virtual machine running and a database running. So that would be an example of public cloud. Then we have private cloud. And so this is where everything is built on the company's data. Also known as on-premises because it's within the premises of the organization, like their physical location. And an organization could technically be operating their own cloud, but it would be private cloud and it could be running an open source cloud software that mimics what Azure would do such as OpenStack. So it looks very similar, but you just put an open stack and it's running a virtual machine or a server and it's also running a database. And the last on our list here is hybrid. So with hybrid, you are using both on-premises and the cloud service provider and they're connected together. And so there's a lot of different networking services that you can use that will facilitate the connection between the two. In this case, we're using ExpressRoute. ExpressRoute is a dedicated connection. It's like having a fiber optic line running from your on-premises data center to the Azure network. So it's just one of the ways Ways you can connect. And if we wanted to understand the pros and cons, I have this nice little table here and we'll just quickly go through it. So if you're using public cloud, it's more cost effective. For security, its screen controls are stronger by default, but some people might not find the cloud will meet all their security requirements because of government and regulatory reasons, not because the cloud is not secure, but it's just those policies. For the level of configuration, it's going to be limited based on what the cloud service provider exposes to you. So there's a lot of configuration there. It's just that if you have your own servers, you obviously can do anything and everything with them. For technical knowledge, you don't need to have as much in-depth knowledge of the underlying infrastructure because you're not physically setting up servers or networking and everything else. Now coming down to private cloud. Private cloud is the most expensive option on our list, so you're going to be paying a lot of money. For security, there is no guarantee that it is 100% secure because you just don't have the same kind of visibility that you would have with a cloud service provider with all those dashboards. It's just so hard to build out all that software, but you could meet your security compliance requirements depending on your situation. But this is becoming less and less as more governments and larger organizations move over to the cloud. You can configure infrastructure exactly how you like because you literally bought the hardware and can do anything you want with it. And for the technical knowledge, you'll require a serious amount of technical knowledge. You might even have a really hard time finding the resources to maintain all that stuff. Down below, we have the hybrid model. So this could be more cost effective based on what you offload to the cloud and also the cost of actually moving data back and forth. For security, you have more to secure, but technically some things are easier to secure on the cloud than it is in private. So you might have a boost in security. You're going to get the best of both worlds in terms of configuration. And for technical knowledge, you're going to need to know both the cloud and how to set things up on premises. And that's the most work there. And just one more deployment model here. I just wanted to briefly touch on cross cloud. This isn't something that is listed on the actual exam, but it's something that you should understand and know. And so cross cloud is when you're using multiple cloud providers, some people refer this as multi-cloud or hybrid cloud. And so I just have an example here. So there's a service called Azure Arc. And what Azure Arc does that extends your control plane. So you can run containers, Kubernetes containers on a different platforms. And so you could have a WS on the left hand side with EKS and GCP Kubernetes engine. And so you can be running virtual machines and they're all treated like they're on the same network. So cross cloud is becoming very popular with extremely large organizations where they have very unique requirements. But I definitely want you to know what that is because it just gets left out. And it's definitely something that is a part of the industry. 